ordinarily a child isn't sold into pornographic slavery and then tortured to be set up in an international criminal court by the United Nations for an atomic bombing from before he was born. But we'll put all that aside because I resemble in my old age the humor of my old man who was a true criminal in that he was a radio lieutenant uh, against the Japanese after they bombed Pearl Harbor. So, you know, what I think of the idea that um, this legendary uh, farce makes sense. Now, I have no particular reason um, to engage in disputation regarding uh, the mother of the victim who was dating Mackenzie or his friend or son or relative who spoke at the impact statement. I couldn't hear a word of it. I um, was only reading body language on the part of Mackenzie and I expected um, remorseless hatred because of the remarks were unforgiving that I had read in passing. I saw pictures of the boyfriend he seemed sporting and loving, uh, frolicking, and she seemed to be intoxicated with uh, reckless abandon. And I think that uh, the boys, at least one of them, was um, aware and probably providing this psilocybin, which is not discovered actual possession of Mackenzie Shirella. So what I'm remarking is that there's significant reason, since no one was able to establish any reason to believe she went out intentionally to murder these men. I do not believe that. I think that there were contrary indications that showed that they were per, per, uh, per involved in precipitating, could be construed as involved in precipitating, based on the evidence, which means that a more powerful argument for what might have happened overshadows the legendary true crime, it seems to me, fabrication that was put together to satisfy the revenge idiom of the people who were concerned not with the truth, but with the reputation of the victim. It's not my um, impression that he was a particularly um, severe person himself. He seemed to be reckless himself. He seemed to be in the joy of life in the pictures that I saw of him. But he also seemed to me to be a, a experimental minded. He's a, a typecast that I associate with drug trafficking. Now, Ancor Institute is located in Ohio, and they came up with um, Lewis Laugh from this idea that I was uh, Casper of the president. And what had become of my senses was that I had followed John Lennon and therefore could have saved him. And one of the people who was wandering around with Martin Haldeman, who put together the um, Neva Corporation's sexual trafficking maneuvers, was Glenn McKenzie. Ironically, McKenzie and McKenzie are um, uh, 
namesakes of one another. They spell their names the same way. Mackenzie had a eye drop bottle. Um, in fact, a man named Jairus, he said his name stood for Jod Virus, tried to persuade me once to drop LSD in my eye. Now remember, I had been beaten to nearly half to death by marauders. And a psychiatrist from Attica State Prison had implanted a neuroplasm that caused terrible suffering. Music was one of the things that alleviated the suffering. And John Lennon was in the maestro room as the leader of that cult of um, media espionage, saying drugs will set you free. So, you know, well, I didn't believe any of them would hide my attempts to resist them. And I hitchhiked to St. Louis, in fact, from Pittsburgh just to hear Robert Fripp play because he seemed to me sane. And um, so you see, like when um, I wrote my letter to Leslie, that was a good example of my attempts to resist them. I was defying what they were saying, trying to do. And they came barking with hatred at me and attacked me and tortured me and raped somebody who tried to help me and murdered somebody I suspect because he was part of a community that was trying to help me. A, a leader of security forces there. And then they lashed out at the Kennedys because I tried to resist them. So you see how berserk they are. Drug trafficking is insane. And you wonder why I identify with um, Mackenzie Shirella. Now you're thinking, well, if he knew that the truth was that she set forth with malice of forethought to murder these men. He would let her go because he doesn't like him. That's not true. I don't think I would be particularly beloved to any of the people who were victims. I, I don't think that Sheila McKenzie would be particularly interested in me. But my concern for her is, is a person who's absurdly um, moved by her condition as a victim of society because I have been through terrible traumas with the same group of people. Now you might think, oh, well, he blew his temper, he blew his top. I came unglued because it seemed to me that the picture that emerges from the evidence is one of complicity in the um, circumstances that led up to her escape behavior on the part of the people who who did it. Now, ironically, one of them was, a, in my case, a man, man named Mackenzie who went around saying things like, he became a lawyer for Pitt. And he was marketing LSD. He said, anybody who takes three hits of LSD is legally insane. Well, doesn't that sound like somebody who's, if he's pushing LSD, wants to tag his followers, his slave, as legally insane for legal reasons, for poaching? Doesn't that, isn't that what that sounds like? And then they find out there's a neuroplasm. So how do we know these Godfather people were trafficking her? You know, we don't know that. We have to guard, protect her rights as a person who is ensnared in a problem that our society's very government has been implicated in, which is this notion of planting drugs on somebody and then blaming them for them. And you're, and you're trying to say that we should we should fight um, a drug war. Well, fight a drug war against the government. If I fought a drug war, I'd be fighting a drug war against an Attica State Prison psychiatrist. Don't you understand that? The people who wrote these letters were in key administration. They were in um, they were. Um, in the Jewish Defense League, one of them was a coroner. So, so you're telling me 
to throw myself at the mercy of a judge who 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 rules wrongheadedly who can read into and scribble anything i mean obviously i i'm i'm telling you truth to the public it, it's it's contemptible to say that you're going to take a child make them into a slut sex slave traffic them by brutal hostage in a drug slavery rocket and put them on trial for Hiroshima in the name of John Lennon. You know, that's a very bizarre set of circumstances. And it comes out of the highest state as much as Pennsylvania. James Child was from the Hancock Institute. He was a philosophy fellow from Bowling Green State University. McKenzie, who they're promoting, was the person who was pushing LSD. Miles Kershaw, who they're promoting, was a person who was pushing LSD. I never did anything of the kind. They would put this stuff on me and I would throw it away. I would pretend to take it and then he had poo. And so I say again that yes, I empathize with, I see myself in Mackenzie Shirell, and I was thinking, oh, he would impulsively slam on the gas. That's not true. He would premeditatively go out with malice of forethought and attack ta somebody. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way. He's so unstable from the past that he might pop off at somebody. I don't have a history of doing things like that. I have insight enough that I know how to deal with the problems that percolate in my psyche. But when you gaslight somebody, they're liable to vent, right? Gaslight, vent, gaslight, vent, gaslight, vent. And the effect on me of seeing Mackenzie Shirelli sentenced in a bizarre judgment that I don't think stands up to the presentation. It certainly doesn't stand up to the presentation of the evidence that I saw. If there's something missing, it met, that was lost on the on the on the defense attorney who was sitting there the whole time too. I mean, he was sitting there the whole time. I wasn't there the whole time. I was there, he was there the whole time, and it was lost on him too. I don't think the judgment was fair, and I bent it, but. You know, there may be a reason. It occurred to me, for example, that the judge may realize that, but want to really, really impact on Mackenzie Shirella, really impact on her. The seriousness of t two people's lives being lost when she was at the wheel of the car. And uh, I amended my sentiments when I address the judge, I'm not looking to find out who the judge is because I know what the novice people will misconstrue. Oh, he's going to obsess with the judge. It's it's ridiculous re misreading and reading, scribbling that I'm accustomed to. But that's the reason why I react the way I do because they, they scribble. They said to me, get this, in Navas, they said he believed he was kidnapped and tortured as a child. Can you imagine anything more scurrilous? And they wonder why I lost my temper. Imagine being shot, hit from behind, like being shot, imagine it. Imagine that a neuroplasm was implanted. Imagine that boys with long hair and reckless mentalities could possibly be um, objectionably entertained by fooling with a young girl's head. Imagine that. I didn't imagine any of it.